Marty Church, morning YouTube, as always, good to be at God's house, a beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning, the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the squirrels are doing their thing, and it's all good, and you all came out today, so praise God, thank you for coming out. So, if you had to answer this question, what brings excitement in your life? What brings excitement in your life? Funny thing is, I just thought about this. The biggest golf tournament's going on right now. It's the Masters. I used to play golf, and I just found out I don't have time for it. But again, it's the biggest golf event in the world. It brings excitement to people, and it would bring to the golfer. Excitement is getting a hole-in-one. To the hunter, excitement would be bagging that big buck with a big rack. To a fisherman, it would be catching that 10-pound largemouth bass. These are things that get people excited. There's so many things. Some people get excited about buying a new home or, or buying things and spending money, whatever it may be. But it gives them an excitement. A lot of people get excited about sports and different things, playing them, watching them, so on and so forth. But today we want to talk about what we should have excitement in and what we were called to have excitement in. I watched Tuesday afternoon when I came in from being outside looking for an eclipse that never appeared because it was cloudy. But anyway, here's the interesting thing. I've seen on the news people that talked about this eclipse, this event. What is an eclipse? By the ass. It occurs when an Earth's shadow falls on the surface of the moon as the planet moves between the sun and the moon. And this one was supposed to be the one, one of the better ones, because it caused totality, which is the total blackness, so on and so forth. But I sat and I watched these people they interviewed after the eclipse, wherever it was in Mexico, might have been in Erie, PA, places it was good visibility. And some of them said, and this just blows my mind, that it was a life-changing event. And one even came and said, it was actual spiritual. Now this perked my ears. So as a pastor, I look at things different than most. I look at what can I get or obtain from, from watching this. And I, and I understand that this was one of the better viewing opportunities. And I understand that it won't happen again for another 20 years. But I like to use things that God puts in my life people, events, so on and so forth, to share the love of the Lord with people. Because a lot of times they'll grab their attention. So our country needs to get excited for all the right things. We don't get excited about the presidential election, I know. We don't get excited about a lunar eclipse. We get excited about, and we're called to get excited about whom Jesus Christ is and who he can be to those that rely and trust upon him. So going back, I've seen people, they're on the news again, and if you wonder how people are, they're pretty, pretty silly. They were bragging how much money they spent to go see a four minute event. Okay, whatever. And how many miles, you know, some drove four or five states to get to see this eclipse. But here's my question. This is, what, this is where the pastor part of me comes in. How many people would, would drive far or go anywhere for their Savior, Jesus Christ? Or many people don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Sorry, this thing's booking me today. So many people struggle to grow closer to him and feel and never understand the excitement of who he is because they fail to spend time with him. Ask someone to go out for breakfast, ask someone to go to a sporting event, and chances are they'll make, them make time in their busy schedule. Ask that same person to come out Sunday and praise and worship God with you and hear a message about what the Lord has upon the pastor and you'll get more excuses than most politicians will give. Let's go to the Word of God, 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 8. The Word of God, 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 8 reads, I exhort therefore that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and given thanks be made for all men. For the kings, for all are in authority, they may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Now here's where here's why I want you to really start zooming, you know, zooming in on. Who will have all men be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. 
For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher, an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. And I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. The lack of people being excited who Jesus Christ is in our country, in our world, it places a burden upon my heart. But here's where it gets even a little, let's go a step further. Anyone that knows the Lord, it should also praise him place of burning upon your heart. Burden meaning that you love people so much that you want them to know what you already have. The lack of sight, the lack of excitement for the one and only true mediator between man and God. But it's nothing new. This just didn't happen this, this year or the last 10 years, the last 50 years. This has been going on forever. Let's go to, you don't have this, Deuteronomy 28, 47 to 48. I'm just going to use the Old Testament to show you how it brings up the new. Deuteronomy 28, 47 to 48 reads, Because thou serveth not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and nakedness, and in want and of all things, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now here's the beauty of this. I want you to understand this. This is nothing new. This is uh, been going around. This is talking about what God has given Israel in all things and, and the beauty of it and how, you know, so significant. So we see that God is telling Israel, if you have obedience and you love me, you will be promised blessings. But if you have disobedience and lack love for me, you will be cursed and receive the curses I have before you. But this is why it's current. They, like all mankind, had a choice. Many times we understood Israel struggled to be faithful and obedience to God. We know it. They get across the Red Sea and they're already complaining. Where's our food? Where's our water? Where's this? Where's that? Why are we going to keep walking? Why are we keep lost? Why do we keep struggling? Because they didn't have obedience and faith in God and who he was. They failed to maintain an excitement of who God was and what he has displayed and given them in all things. The lack of love and obedience for God in Christ will cost mankind, mankind is current. That means everyone, all the world, so on and so forth. So much that their life here on earth, but more importantly, what happens after death? So my question is, how much do you love the Lord today? So much your life and obedience for him and his word shows it to all. You have to, here's, I was sharing this with my wife in the white here. I said, the good news about being a pastor is I'm not I'm accountable for what I preach and teach but I'm not accountable for what the man or woman comes to believe upon praise God because it's a personal relationship all right back to the word who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth for there is one God one mediator between God and men and that man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time to me, this is the key. To me as a pastor and, a, and as someone that loves the word and loves the Lord, nothing is more exciting to me than when a man or woman finally gets it. Too many people never get it. But then they finally get it. It all comes together. The word finally hit the mark and the Holy Spirit is, is convicted and showing them that there is a better way and that way is of Christ. And the change begins and you start seeing a, a newness in that person. And the things that they loved to do in the past now are, are a struggle. They don't want to do them anymore, praise God, because that is the regenerate man or woman coming forth. They're changing and they're growing in the Lord. When someone finally gets what Jesus Christ has given them, they get an excitement about it. But many in our world, and I, I tell them what, the way it is, 
don't have a desire or assurance of salvation because they think when life is over, the lights go out, it's done. Then we can go a step further. I love this one. No, I don't, it's just disgusting. Some believe in a thing called reincarnation. Now, I wanna throw this out here. Can you imagine, people struggle to believe in Jesus Christ as their personal savior, but yet some people think they come back as something. Can you imagine coming, what you come back as? Wow. And I think about it, I'm thinking, what a stretch of imagination to come back as an animal or worse, maybe an insect. Don't know, but people do believe in it. Who will have all men to be saved and come to, unto the knowledge of the truth. What are we saved from? People, that's the question people got to understand. If you ask a man or woman they believe in God, they resoundingly say, yes, I believe in God. And then you say, well, how do you know that? What do you believe in? You trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. I believe in God. And then if you go a little deeper and ask, are you saved? And they'll say, from what? From an earthquake? From a hurricane? From a wicked shooter? From a truck that runs into a building? You know, steals a truck and runs into a building, which just happened? Friends, God's love is so much, he wants all men and women to have be saved from his wrath. Yes, there'll be a time when people will experience God's wrath. Out of love, God gave up, and you know the story, gave up his only begotten son. Out of love for mankind, a love the world never seen or knew before. Our world will never understand this love until they believe upon Jesus Christ as their savior and what he has done upon the cross out of love. The awesome thing about God, he wants nothing more than to be the best possible father. I tried to be the best possible father, but guess what? I failed numerous times. And so have all men in the world failed their kids or family at one time, because we're still human. We're still of a, of a flesh nature, but God is different. He desires that all his children love him so much and are obedient to him and believe upon what he has given him in Jesus Christ. But here's where it's gonna get a little more interesting. But then when we are his children, how are you as children? You have faith to believe in what he has given by the way of Jesus Christ and you profess and you confess and you believe upon your heart and you know. But when we are his children, we are not of those of the world. Those that are undisciplined or uncontrolled like many people in our world are. But we are children through obedience and loving him above all. Knowledge of the truth. We come to say the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? The truth of the gospel, the truth of who Jesus Christ is, and the truth of what God's holy word represents. The word is the truth. A lot of people will say, well, I believe most of the Bible. Okay, that one just drives me crazy. But again, either we believe it all or we don't believe it at all. For there is one God and one meter between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. I'm going to keep throwing it in there because I want you to leave here and now I want it seared into your, your thought process. Why was I called to preach? It's a question I asked myself for years and I finally got it. I'm here to preach the truth and to help people that are currently caught up in a religion, in a tradition or their own goodness, that they too would have what I have been given, what you have been given by the way of Jesus Christ and the way of salvation, the way of eternal life. All right, here's where it's gonna get real. The other day while having a wonderful breakfast with two dear friends, we were sharing the word and we were just loving upon each other. It was my turn to share how I gave my life to Christ. And I was real brief if that's possible, but I was brief as I could be. And I was sharing how, but one time I believed in God, but I followed a religion that believed in God, but never led me to believe in Jesus Christ. And I shared with that. And you'd never be surprised how many ears are listening. As I was done sharing, this elderly woman got up and she came up and she knew my one friend and said, I wanted to say goodbye. And she turned to me and said, you tell a lot of stories. And I said, well, I'm a pastor. And as soon as I told her that, I wanted to give her my card and share the Lord with her. She says, I already know you 
and I know God. And I thought about it for a second. She didn't want to hear anything I had to tell her. I went home and it burdened me the rest of my day because so many people are in the same boat or car, seat, wherever you want to say in the same mindset. They believe there's a God or believe in God, but they fail to believe what God has given by the way of Jesus Christ. And it just burdened me. But again, I pray people are put in my life for a purpose. And yours as well. It burdened me the rest of my day because so many claim to believe in God, but do not trust in Jesus Christ as their one and only true mediator. We can believe in God. And let me give you the scripture that goes with it. But without the one and only true mediator in our life, we have no foundation or a true relationship with God through his beloved son, Jesus Christ. And we do not have salvation. I'm here to tell you that. James 2.19 says, I love the word of God because it just puts everything in perspective. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now I'm here to tell you, the devils do not have salvation. The devil will not be next to you or devils next to you when, when you're in the presence of Jesus Christ, when you leave this crazy world. But yet they know who God is, but they do not know who Jesus Christ is. Many, many in our world have a general knowledge of God. And if you share the word with anyone, you'll see how general it really is, which is a result of poor teaching and preaching. People that don't know who God is in Jesus Christ is a result of people going to all the wrong places and hearing all the wrong people of who God is and who Jesus is. And it's the truth. We can believe in God and not give an eternal life in him. Our ignorance and hardness of heart, not having faith in what God has given us by the way of Jesus Christ. Here it is again. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, and that man, Christ Jesus. Friends, it's you all. Dear church, that's you all. Dear viewer, that's you. Here's where it gets to the point. And it says that one mediator between God and man. And this is where we learn. This is where we grow. This is where when someone comes out and says, well, I believe in God too, you know, and then we can go back and say, well, wait a minute. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? What is a mediator? Glad you asked. One who stands between two or more parties whose function is to bring these parties into contact or near to each other result in unity or reconciliation. Reconciliation. I love it. The Greek term Messiah's mediator, which is used to describe the work of the Lord and reconcile a man to God. He is served as a negotiator of peace between the two parties. Good stuff. Good stuff. This tells me there are no co-mediators. There are no priests, pastors, rabbis, or saints, or anyone that can fill the rightly fill the role of the mediator between God and man and speaks of God who is Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, y'all know it. It's Jesus saying to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus, here it is. I pulled this out. I want to drive it home. Jesus, the only perfect mediator. Here's where, this is why he's such an awesome Savior and Messiah. He was tempted beyond all measure, yet unlike us, remained sinless. He understands our temptations and our predicaments as sinners. He was able to withstand all temptation and what the world and Satan threw at him. God the Father placed absolute trust in him. Here it is. I'm going to close it with this, this part. Jesus Christ is our sinless and sympathetic representative for us to God the Father. That is the most beautiful, perfect, and holy mediator that we will ever be given. All right. 
Here's where I might ruffle a few feathers, someone watch or whatever, but I have to do it out of, if I don't preach the word of God as it's intended to preach, then I don't do it justice. And then I'm going, and I'm trying to get approval by man instead of God, and that's not the way a pastor's supposed to preach. I'm going to be lovingly blunt. Every time I tell you it's going to be lovingly blunt, be prepared. And the truth, this does not say Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a mediator between man and and God. One day I was with a, I met a dear friend and we started talking and she knew I was a pastor and she just started opening up to me. But then she got to the, the wonderful question and she says, we'll see eye to eye in everything but one thing. Anytime you hear that, you know you're going to be in for some trouble. And she said, she prayed to Mary, not God or through Jesus Christ. It broke my heart, I shared with her, and, and it was just in ground in her, and I pray, but listen to this. To claim there is more than one mediator, one man other than be, being a woman is false doctrine. This is wrong teaching, and I pray that people through the Spirit will see the error of their ways of thinking. Why does, here it is, I'm gonna I tell you like I'm blunt. Why does such false practice continue to become entrenched in mankind? Because most have no desire to learn who the true mediator is and what he can provide. Now I'm gonna support it all with the word of God. Philippians 4, 4 to 7 reads, and we use this, this past week in our study, rejoice in the Lord always, and I gave said rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but everything in prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Why does it say rejoice always? I had to throw this in there. Because when we rejoice always, it shows our family that don't know the Lord. It shows our co-workers. It shows the world that we're not of it, but that we have faith to believe that no matter what we go through, we got the Lord. He'll never leave nor forsake us. And we don't worry about anything. We make a prayer request to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's important, listen to this. This is what the Lord put on my heart. It's important we don't pray to anyone but to God through Christ because if we pray to other people, we are claiming, we are claiming they have the power and authority and the deity to answer our prayers. It's so false, it drives me crazy. But we must also not think, there's a lot of people think, that closing our prayer in the name of Jesus that every prayer is going to be answered. The only way a prayer is going to be answered is this way. If it's for the glory of God and thy will be done. It was his will, not something. And we, we sh I just shared this with someone. Everyone, a lot of times, God wants to hear what we have needs, true needs. But he really don't care what we have and wants. All right? Because then it's not of him. Listen to this. I didn't write this. Charles Stanley wrote this. In other words, our requests must be consistent with Christ's desired purposes, which are revealed to us in the Bible. And our motive should be to glorify God. What does man do? What a lot of pastors that are not in the word like they should be, they're trying to glorify themselves instead of God. Not simply to please ourselves. When we, have, when we pray in this way, we can confidently say in Jesus' name and have faith that God will answer John 16, 23, continue to support and build this. I'm building you a foundation. And when the storms come, the foundation will not be shaken. John 16, 23 reads, and that ye day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say it to you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will, he will give it you. Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father. Praying and acting as a loving mediator between man and God the Father. John 14, 12 and 14 reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, 
shall he do also, and the greater works that these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. It doesn't say do this or go to this one or, or go to your pastor, go to your priest, go to your rabbi, go to whatever, go to one of these mega church preach. No, it says go to God the Father, but in the name of Jesus Christ. He is God and man for walk to earth. He is all deity of God. The awesome thing, Jesus is being all authority of God. We can pray in the name of Jesus as it claims we know he is all God. He gives God the glory as well as showing the glory in Jesus Christ, the son. We are acting in faith in Christ, but we are called to act on Jesus' behalf, doing his will. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There it goes again. I just put a torpedo in those false religions in their boat and sink it because if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is going to his salvation, you got nothing in your boat is sinking fast. He is the only mediator between God and man that he can give us life-altering life, give us a new creation through us in Jesus Christ, the giver of life and death, and the one and only true Savior. All right. We owe our parents for being here. By the act of a miracle of childbirth and our parents getting together, we are here. But... We owe Christ everything for giving us a new life that can only be found through him. John 14, 23 to 26 reads, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me, listen to this, the word of God tells you the pros and cons of everything. He that loveth me not, Keepeth not my same sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and brings all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. We must believe who Jesus is to love him. If someone tells you, yeah, yeah, I know Jesus, but the love for him is not evident, then they don't know him. It's pretty simple. We can claim, I both this out, I, I'm gonna read it because I have to the way I wrote it. We can claim we love him, but if we have no faith to believe upon him, rely upon him, and the word, knowing that God has given all authority to Jesus, then we have no belief. Pretty simple. The third one of the triune God we know is the Holy Spirit, which brings to heart, brings to the man, brings to the woman that, that knows the Lord and, and shows them and comforts them and convicts them and leads them. And, and at times when they're talking to someone, the word will just come out of them sometimes. And that's just a beautiful thing. The key to growing in Christ is not what to know, is wanting to know him more. It's not drudgery to come out on Sunday or Tuesday, or reading the word. You know how many people make excuses why they don't read the word? That's between the man and the woman and the Lord. I tell people that. And whatever your, your excuses or mine are, guess what? It is what it is. All right. The reason so many fight to come out Sundays and read the word, I tell it like it is, because I've been there, and I'm going to tell you how I've been there is they have not developed a sincere, deep relationship that one gets with spending time with the one they love. I tell you this all the time. If I never spent time with my wife over the years, I would never have grown to know everything about her, good and bad, okay, same with her, with me. It goes both ways. But at one time, I was that person, not excited about reading the word. It was a, it was a chore. Oh, I'm going to read a chapter today, brother. Because I didn't do it with the right heart or spirit. I was doing it because it was more of a task. But then once you allow the spirit of the word to start showing you, it has excitement. It has meaning. 
And God will show you and bless you so much in the process of reading his word. It's a beautiful thing. It's time we get excited for all the right, right things. Not talking about anything going on in the world. I'm talking about a life that shows that we love Jesus Christ above all. Galatians 3, 17 to 22 reads. And I was going to put it all together. And this is, I, the word of God is so awesome. Galatians 3, 17 to 22 reads. And this I say that the covenant, covenant, agreement, something that God has given us a covenant, it will never be broken by God. That was confirmed before of God in Christ, that the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, and it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of a promise, but God gave Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator mediator now a mediator is not a mediator of one but god is one in the law that's against the promises of god god forbid for there have been a law given that could have given life Ver verily righteousness should have been by the law but the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith listen to this the word of god is so awesome but that the faith by the promise of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Abraham, people ask me this question, and this is a good question. Well, how did they come to, to know that they were going to be in the presence of the Lord when he wasn't even around yet? And it was by faith. It was, Abraham was justified by his faith in God and loved him and believed about what God would do for him. Now here's where it gets interesting. From that point on, some 430 years later, through Moses, God gives them the commandments, the 613 Mosaic laws and the 10 commandments, so on and so forth. All the things, listen to this, all the things men must do to walk in God's ways, showing they love God and desire him and want to follow his laws. But what happened? They broke them. They couldn't handle them. They were too strenuous to most. The law had a purpose. It brought man into their own realm and how they were out of the line of God's righteousness. Now here's where I put it personal. To me and to all mankind, the law should be the perfect example of how God's grace through Jesus Christ is so unbelievably merciful and wonderful. If people don't get excited about what Jesus Christ has done for them, I don't think there's, you know, I know you never give up hope, but that's, that's the hope. That is the promise. That is what I will stake my life on till the day I die. Okay. I'm not the most biblically schooled in the Mosaic laws. I, I understand what they are. There's, there's a lot of them, 613 to be exact. But I completely understand what we have been given way more than we deserve by the way of Jesus Christ. That God's love and mercy came forth. And you know the story. And an innocent baby. And it turned out to be the perfect sacrifice 33 years later. When we confess and believe in our hearts that we have been given salvation through him. He acted on our behalf, the one and only true mediator of God. He whom is Jesus Christ. Now listen, this is, I love this. He has given us and promised us the better covenant, the better promise, the better deal than anyone else. That means Noah, that means David, that means Abraham, that means Moses. The list goes on. These men were far more faithful than I probably ever was. But yet, we've been given a better covenant because we have been given Jesus Christ. Hebrews 8, 6. But now have you obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which he was established upon better promises. Jesus was the only acceptable and always will be until he returns the only acceptable mediator between God and man. Amen. 
He paid my debt and yours in full. He bled out of love for you. He died out of forgiveness for you. And he rose to give life. Not sure how much more a perfect mediator can do. He can't because he did it all. He did it all. Back to the beginning. I'm just going to bring it back into light. Scripture, Timothy. I'm just going to go 2, 4 to 6. Because I want to continue to drive it home. It not only shows the triune God, but it also shows his love and mercy and tells us that at a point in time, he gave up his only beloved and begotten son so that all, all, all will not have an excuse as to why they never inherited salvation because we have been given the most blessed mediator ever to act on our behalf. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16 reads, I believe it's my last scripture. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. I'm here to tell you there's no man priest, no man pastor that could do that. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. For we are not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Just support it, what I read to you earlier in the message. Let us therefore, this is what he promises to us. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Dear friends, we are not perfect in our walk. No one is. No one ever will be. We are perfected. Now what I mean by that, I, I am becoming more perfect in Christ. I am becoming, what does that mean? That means I'm becoming more mature. And you through the word, and through the message, and through the teaching, through study, so on and so forth, you're becoming more mature, but we'll never be perfected like Jesus Christ was. When we fail, we don't lose hope that our salvation is gone. Some preach that. Can you imagine a, a God that would take back what he has rightfully given you out of love and comfort? Wow. We repent. We go to Christ our mediator, the one and only high priest. When we have faith in him, we have the boldness to come before God Almighty. Why? Because he did it all for us. That is, and not only be forgiven, but continue, continue to be his sons and daughters forever until the day of redemption. I know people that their fathers disowned them forever worldly father because they're of the flesh and ain't that forgiveness in their hearts but yet we have a God that loves us and always we will always be his children Amen. today do you know the one and only true mediator that's a question we all have to make sure we know and I don't say it because and I, you know what here's what I'm learning and I'm slow but I've learned you know what let it be upon the Lord and the Holy Spirit Okay, you plant the seed and let everything else happen. <laughs> Have you called upon Jesus to trust upon him, seek and love him, knowing nothing on your own strength and ability can give you what Jesus Christ has given? What does he give you? Salvation and eternal life by trusting and believing that he is the one and only true mediator forever. Amen. Let us close in prayer if we may. Dear loving Father, has come before you. We thank you that your grace and mercy shine so bright that we couldn't even see it because the glory of God through your son, Jesus Christ, has brightly been given. But we just pray right now that we would understand the significance of what we have been given by a mediator. There's mediators in the world that go between two, two uh, parties. Maybe it's a union and a, and a company and they try to get things settled. And that means nothing. But you have gone between us and God the Father to give us the lively hope of who we can be for believing in Jesus Christ as our Savior. We're thankful. And I pray if someone's not sure of that here today, if someone's not sure of that watching, Lord, maybe someone reads my message, Lord, I pray you would open your heart to the truth. Many people have been deceived all many years of their life through, through things that false teachers have taught them. But you will show them the way and the truth and the life. And that is through you, Jesus Christ. 
We love you. We thank you. We give you the glory and everything in Jesus' most holy name, our most beloved, blessed mediator. Amen.